Hello everybody. Well, if any of you guys own a Ford, you all know that it never ends when you have a Ford. About two years ago, I, well, I rebuilt the entire tractor and painted it and everything. And one of the things I did, I had the Rusa Master injection pump off and I had that rebuilt by a diesel shop. I paid $691 for that. Two years later, about well, two weeks ago, try to start it up, won't start. Crack the uh, injection lines, I have the throttle, full throttle position. No fuel's coming out of the injection lines. That metering plunger in there is stuck and that's what did the pump in the, uh, the first time. So I'm not too happy about that. Of course, it's this junk new diesel that we have, the low sulfur stuff, even though I had the additive in it, I guess it just wasn't enough. So. I'm going to take this pump off and I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling brave. I'm going to think, I think I'm going to try to, uh, loosen the metering plunger up myself. Found a couple cutaway drawings on, on the internet. So I think, I think we might be able to do it. So anyway, anyway, I'm going to walk, walk all you guys through taking the pump off and putting it back on in case you have a tractor like this yourself. So firstly, you can just pull this off, but I'm going to try to make it easier for myself when I'm putting it back on. I don't know if it will make it any easier, but I'm going to align everything more or less where it should be. Uh, align the motor that is to where it should be when I'm going to put it back on. And that is, there's uh, two timing marks in there I'm going to line up. And I'm going to make sure that the, the timing mark degree mark on the flywheel is showing through that window and about where it should be. And that lets me know that I'm going to have number one cylinder on compression and everything should be pretty much ready to go when I put the pump back on. But it's no big deal if you don't do this. So anyway, I'm going to take these screws off to expose the window. I'm going to shut off the, the fuel supply right there at the bottom of the tank. I'm going to remove the, this is the return line. I'm going to remove the return line and I'm going to remove the injection lines, of course, and also the, the, the main supply line here. I'm going to disconnect that and then I'm going to loosen nuts and remove the pump. Okay, so I got the supply and return lines off. I drained the filter and, of course, have a drain pan ready. Here's the window. Notice I put the screws back in so you don't lose the screws. And the top timing mark there is stationary. And on the bottom disc, that part rotates as the engine rotates. And there's a very finely scribed line on that bottom part. And when those two line up, that's, that's, the, uh, that's how you line up the timing. So I'm gonna crank the motor over until, until that line comes around. You gotta kinda bump the starter over because you can't really see it as, you, as the motor spins around fast. You have to kind of bump the starter and just keep checking for it. So I cranked the motor over until I can see timing marks in the timing window, but I'm still not seeing any marks on the timing window in the, on the injection pump. So that means uh, a different cylinder is at compression, not number one. So what I did, I a real pain in the ass. You got to take the starter out. That's the only other hole you can access the flywheel. Now you can bar the bar the engine over with the teeth on the flywheel. But I'm going to take some chalk and make a mark. Make a mark here. So when I'm barring it over on this side, I know when when the timing marks are going to be shown through, or when the timing marks are going to be shown on the other side. So I'm going to turn this over one revolution and take another look. Okay, so here we go. See it's that see it's that faint scribed line there on the bottom. And then again you can see the timing marks up there. Looks like I uh I got the timing a little bit off. It's at 20 degrees and it, it should be 18. But it's also possible there's a little bit of uh, backlash in the gears that are that's messing up my 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 reading right there. But that doesn't really matter. Anyway, we know that number one cylinder's on compression. 
see timing marks. We see the timing mark on the injection pump. So it's gonna be easy to put this pump back on. Okay, so I got the injection pump on my bench here. See, I have it in a cookie tray or a baking tray. I do this with all my carburetors and anything that I'm taking apart that has a lot of parts and you don't want to lose anything. So that helps also any fuel that drains out, doesn't drain onto your bench. Took the injection lines off. I wiped all the dirt away from the injection holes. So this, this is how the pump sits as it's on the tractor. And the main high pressure pump and delivery valve is in here. And I did a little bit of Google image searching for uh, cutaway drawings. And uh, so I've spent five minutes on, on the internet, so therefore I'm a, I'm a professional now. Uh, there's a governor in here. There's a flyweight governor, which operates a, there's a lever over here somewhere, I believe, and some spring, a little spring. And then there's a metering valve right over here, I believe. So without further ado, let's take this thing apart. There's three screws on there. Okay. That aside. Okay, I think I see what what I'm looking for. <clears throat> there's the there's an inside shot. The governor is right past there and it operates this that bent piece of sheet metal pushes that spring and then there's this throttle, the external throttle lever moves this uh, thing, for lack of a better term. And I believe I can see right in there is the metering plunger. So I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way and see if, see if I can get that thing to move. Well, I'm going to try to show you, or give you a better look at what's, what's going on in here. Uh, again, this looks to be like the governor spring. This arm up here is, is the governor arm. This is the external throttle here, and it works this, this piece. There's a rod right there. That, it's screwed in from the outside, and it seems that the only purpose is to serve as a guide for this spring uh, follower kind of thing here. And there's this black arm here, which seems to connect to the fuel pin or metering pin, which is right there. As that, as that moves, you can't see it on the camera, but that pin rotates. It seems to rotate freely, and there's also, see that little lever there? I don't know why there's that little thing sticking out, but... So, the uh, throttle up position would be like this, where you're compressing the governor spring. The governor is going to fight back and push. Get my finger in there. And it compresses the spring. The governor is going to fight back and push this way and push that black rod down and rotate that, that pin that's directly behind this lever here. Now let's see. We got some shadows here, but but I mean everything seems to be moving pretty freely. Um, this isn't so much. This is partly an instructional video, at least of how to take the pump off. But I'm just kind of struggling along here. 
See, I can push that pin in and out. It does move. But I don't, there's no way this movement can turn into a, a this movement. I really hate to think I took the injection pump off just to uh, take this stupid cover off and poke a pin. Because I, 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 I tried to take this lever, this, this throttle shaft out. I'm, I'm, I'm stumped. I feel like an idiot. I'm stumped as to how to take the damn thing out. Took these screws out and nothing's, nothing's coming. So, I'm going to do a little more research, and maybe, I don't know, I'll just, I'm going to squirt some WD-40 in here, just let that pin soak overnight, maybe, and I'll try putting it on tomorrow and uh, see what happens. Well, it's the next day I'm back at the tractor. I put the cover back on, and I'm ready to install it back on the, on the motor. I turn the, the pump shaft counterclockwise until the timing mark is roughly an eighth of an inch to the right of the fixed timing mark. And I have the, the flywheel timing mark at 18 degrees before top dead center. And you'll notice the 18 degree mark is a longer mark that extends all the way to the side of the hole where that little, that little mark is on the side of the hole there so you can easily eyeball where Eight, uh, where that 18 degree mark lines up. Okay, now I'm going to remove uh, backlash in the gears by rotating the engine a little bit. The, the manual says to rotate it with the starter, but, you know, typical Ford oversight. Uh, the only hole to access the ring gear is through the starter hole. So I don't know, they probably expect you to install the starter, then remove the starter again so you can borrow it over by hand when you're doing a the, the final fine-tuning adjustments, but anyway Just get in here with a and uh, of course rotate it in the direction of Engine rotation Until well, I need two hands, but rotate it until the timing mark is out of sight on the right side of the pump window the timing window on the pump well the Ford manual is wrong it says remove backlash by rotating the engine with the starter until the timing mark and the pump is out of sight at the right side of the window. And if I turn that motor in the direction of rotation, the timing mark goes to the left side of the window. So I'm going to assume and hope that that's a typo. So I uh, brought the timing mark back to 18 degrees with a bar on the flywheel ring gear. And then I rotated the pump so the timing marks line up. And I tighten those, those two nuts down. Now I'm going to rotate the engine in direction of rotation to complete rotations with a bar and make sure everything still lines up. Well, I got the motor around two rotations and I'm not surprised that the timing marks in the window don't line up because the factory made reference marks there weren't aligned. So I'm going to loosen those nuts, real, realign this pump. You just loosen those nuts and rotate the pump until those two marks line up there and rotate the engine around again in the direction of rotation and again double check the alignment of the marks. But this, I mean, it, this manual is written very poorly. I don't know how I did it the first time I put this pump on, but it doesn't make any sense where it tells you to remove backlash in the pump by rotating in the direction of rotation until the mark is out of sight, and then use a screwdriver on the ring gear to bring the mark back to its original um, orientation. First, they don't say whether it's the timing mark on the flywheel or the timing mark on the injection pump, but this, to me, I assume I'm rotating opposite the direction of rotation, but maybe they mean continuing in the same direction of rotation, I don't know. And then they say, rotate the pump assembly slightly so the timing marks are aligned, but 
they don't specify which direction you can rotate the pump because if you rotate it one way you're going to be going in the direction of backlash if you rotate it the other way you're going to be um, giving it more backlash and then here when it's when the manual is telling you to recheck the alignment or the the, the, the timing marks being in alignment it tells you just to rotate in the uh, direction of rotation so at the very least this is written very poorly and that is just plain wrong that that's the left side of the window anyway so let's try it again so i barred the engine over again the timing mark timing marks lined up nicely so i put the the cover on i tightened the two mounting bolts down i attached the return line and uh, i didn't show this on the video because i need, needed three hands for it but uh, before I attached the uh, supply line, I held this end up and I stuck some funnels into it and I poured in some straight fuel conditioner. Uh, there was a, uh, a, an independent study done about this stuff and power service um, fuel conditioner and all sorts of different um, conditioners. And this came out on top as far as lubricity goes. So I bought this. And I use it in my Dodge Cummins and also this tractor. So I poured a bunch of straight conditioner right in, right in through here into the filter. And then I put the line back on, opened up the top bleeder screw, and then opened up the, the tank, shut off, and fuel filter filled up. And once fuel started coming out here, you tighten the screw down. And uh, that's all there is to it for bleeding the, bleeding the air out of the fuel system on the gravity fed side anyway. I'm not even gonna attach the injection lines. I'm just gonna crank this over and see if anything comes out of these four uh, banjo fittings here. And if, if it does, we're good. Oh, of course I attach the, uh, the throttle linkage too. But if fuel comes out, we're good. If not, I guess I gotta take the damn thing off again. So, wish me luck. Well, for a moment, I don't know if I I uh, mentioned this earlier in the video, but um, I said when I try to start it, I'm going to have a, a block of wood ready to put over the air intake should it run away. And I was about to get a block of wood, but <laughs> I don't think she's going to run away without the injection lines on it. So full throttle. We might have success. Okay, so I have all of the injection lines on, just finger tight, if not um, with a little loose with some with some space there, because what the first step is in uh, bleeding the injection lines, the injection pump, is to crank it over with these nuts and those nuts loose. Or right, those aren't nuts; those are banjo bolts, and that's the purpose is to flush out any um, any contaminants that might be on that ceiling surface. And this is going to take some cranking so I have the battery charger ready to go. I'm just going to do that a couple times until I see a good bit of fuel coming out, tighten those up, and then go to these nuts here. Got fuel coming out, tighten those down, now, you got to flush these nuts out and uh, bleed the line of air. All four nuts are, uh, or rather all four lines are spitting fuel, so I'm going to tighten these down. All right, here's the moment of truth. I got my block of wood ready.
call that a success. She's running a little shitty. Probably got some leftover air in the lines and all that. And it's also running on pretty a pretty heavy dose of of that Opulube stuff, not straight diesel. Um, so I guess we're all set and ready to go. And case in point, when it sits, it shits. So I just I just gotta start this a little more often, let it run. And uh, I also have learned that to take that cover off that I took off, you really don't need to take the pump off the motor. So if this happens again, I'll just take that governor case cover off and uh, poke at that little fuel pin and I think I should be all right. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps out some of you guys with the uh, roast of bastard pumps. Uh, or Ford tractors or whatever. So thanks for watching, and as always, leave a comment or a sub uh, subscribe or hit the like button. Thanks for watching. Come back for more.